When I was eight, I would spend nights outside contemplating the stars and wondering to myself, I'm so small, who I would become. Today, I finally understand who I am. Before I tell you, I would like to get acquainted with the room. So can you tell me who you are? Just shout out the answer, all of you. Come on, who are you? Yeah, you can go as deep as you want with your answer. You can be a teacher, you can be a wanderer, you can be a reader. Everything that came to your mind when I asked you this question constitutes the layers that contributed to found you. I am an astrophysicist. This might give you a first glimpse at who I am. And some images might emerge in your mind, like this picture of Veva Rubin, the first female astrophysicist who discovered dark matter. I'm also a traveler. There you might think, wow, I would have never guessed that English is not our native language. <laughs> 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 what if I tell you that I am also a street artist, a musician, a motorcycle rider? How do you deepen your understanding of who I am by connecting those underlying elements that are part of me? Am I defined by what I do? Or can you grasp more fully my personality by knowing those different layers? Carl Sagan said, we are made of star stuff. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. And I would like to add that just like massive stars, we are also made of layers. Massive stars are made of basic elements, hydrogen, which by nuclear reaction, we create new elements of aliens, which will fuse to create new elements forming even more layer, one of carbon, one of oxygen, etc., up until the core of the star, the most stable element, iron. When all those elements, layers upon layers, have built a strong core of iron, the star can compensate for the gravity anymore. The layers collapse, thus leading to the explosion of the star, in a magnificent supernova. Now, the core of the star remain, we call it a neutron star. But the different elements of those layers are spread into and through the universe. They are the very reason you and I are here. Yeah, we are made of star stuff. All those elements, the carbon, the oxygen, the iron, that are inside of you and on this planet came from space. Yeah, this is the beauty of nature. Now, to me, spirituality, astrophysics, and poetry are connected. So, even though we are not made of actual layers of the same atoms, we do bear a tremendous resemblance to massive stars. We are also made of layers, striving to build our inner core. And when our core is strong enough, we feel ready to spread and share our own elements with other people to help them create their own inner core. And that's the main difference with massive stars. We cannot create new layers by ourselves. We're not radioactive. We create new layers when we crash into new peoples and ideas built upon each other to straighten our inner core, the core who define who we are. Now, many mysteries remain in the universe, but new events occur every day, birthing new answers as they unfold. I told you that the heart of the star, called the neutron star, remains. Well, two years ago, I was part of a team and we found ourselves in a position to scrutinize something never observed before. Two neutron stars collided into each other to create a black hole. And science has never been able to explain how some massive, heavy elements like gold came into Earth. Where did it come from? What we found out 
when we observe those two neutron stars crashing into each other, was that they created God. The God we have on Earth came from this kind of encounter. And so those two strong cars crashing into each other, creating something we consider precious, valuable, and new, gold. This is why connecting with lots of people with diverse backgrounds and ideas is so important. By crashing into new people's and ideas, you integrate new thoughts and experience new elements that reveal new layers inside that you had never encountered before. And in terms of despair, this process of gathering new people, new thoughts, new ideas, new energy become even more vital. In the past few years, like many of you, I suspect, I have grown comfortable with an increasing sense of despair. I became an astrophysicist to better understand our world, but now it felt like I was watching its decay, the environment being poisoned, more pieces of plastic in our ocean than stars in our own galaxy, the world hurtling towards the sixth mass extinction, Humanity's scourged with floods, droughts, and heat waves as a climate crisis accelerates. What could I do that would have any meaningful impact? This question started to nag at me more gently. I was already a vegan, riding my bicycle in the city, zero waste, a minimalist. There must be more I could do. And it felt like we were treating the symptoms of a more massive problem. We are not treating the malady. And then I met, or should I say, I crashed into Lea at Georgia Tech, where I was a postdoc. We quickly became friends, having never-ending discussion about life. And the best way I know to deal with this sense of hopelessness is to act. So we started volunteering together. We work with lots of organizations, helping to distribute foods to homeless people, send some basic products to famine-ravaged countries. We played with refugee children. We were activated. But I told Lea about this continued feeling of overwhelm and this nagging sense of wanting and needing to do more. One day she asked me, what do you want to do? Which issue do you want to tackle? Which solution can you come up with? So I went back home, I sat at my desk, and I made a presentation. I called it, How to Save the World, <laughs> starting in Atlanta. The World Shark Project was born. We started it in Atlanta to raise awareness and teach people about reusing and recycling plastic while promoting community engagement and changing companies' behavior. Now, since I am also an artist, I designed an interactive sculpture that has caused the interest of Georgia Aquarium, with whom we started working. It's a long journey of proposing, refining, and funding, but we are feared by the idea that nearly two million people a year will interact with the sculpture. It took us two years to gain momentum with this project, but it taught me so much about who I am and what I can do. I am an astrophysicist, but I'm also, it turns out, an activist. This new layer brought me closer to revealing and understanding my inner core. So, I would really encourage you to seek out new encounters. Bring new people into your life. Expand your community. Learn new things every day. The world is changing, but we have the power to shape it. Consider yourselves astronauts, not passengers. Huge discoveries are waiting to be made inside of each of you, are waiting for you to crash into someone that will make you add another layer in your core. 
We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. What layer would you add that will help us reveal another view of our world, something precious, valuable, and new as God? So, I'm an astrophysicist, or am I? And you, who are you now? Thank you.